All right, everyone, we are joined by the lovely Hillary Burton Morgan in person. We're so excited to have you here. The last time we talked to you was over Zoom. We're happy to have you in studio. We're going to talk about your new book, Grimoire Girl. Mm -hmm. Um, I have like that's like a tongue twister for me. It is. (laughs) Yeah. Like I noticed the other day as I started doing press that rural diaries Rural is right. a hard word. Yeah. Like, we can make fun of this. Grimoire. Right, right. <laughs> Everyone looks at me like, that's really what you want to do. Yeah. Yes. I was like, b- practicing before you got here, I was like, grimoire. Grim. If like, you say just, it with like a fancy accent, mm-hmm. it's easier. Like, right. This is my grimoire. Yeah. 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 This, is, this is her book, Grimoire Girl. Yeah, get fancy. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. We're super excited to have you in. The book is awesome. How would you... How would you describe the content of the book? Because you jump around to a lot of different things and there's a lot of different great things in there, but it's like kind of tips and tricks, but also storytelling. Yeah, so a grimoire, when I first learned what that word was, it was a book that a witch kept. And it was like the thing people would go and look for in their house to prove they were a witch so they could kill them. Um, And this idea that a book could be so dangerous, a book of life-saving wisdom is something that was so important to a woman that she would risk her life to keep it. Um, A book A grimoire is, it's a book of the life-saving knowledge you collect throughout your entire life. And it's not dangerous, Mm -hmm. you know? That's something that has been vilified. Women have been vilified. And so to take that power back and say out loud, like, I'm going to write a grimoire and I'm going to share it with everybody uh, is an act of rebellion in and of itself. But it was important to me that I collect the elements of magical thinking that have saved me throughout certain dark periods in my life, whether that's like complicated work situations or pandemics Mm. or just like personal lows. Like I went through a number of miscarriages that I wrote about in my last book. Being able to frame those dark days in a way that brings light uh, is really, really important. Mm. And so I wanted to talk about those tips, but also show how they have actually worked in my life through writing memoir. So it's a collection of essays. It's split up into three different uh, little chunks for the three different homes that I've lived in, my childhood home in Virginia, and then the haunted house I lived in in North Carolina, and then the farm where I am now in New York. It's really, it's fun to go through it all. I loved what you said about your everything that you wrote about your child at home too it's like you know then you were there till high school but then yeah. when your parents moved it was like well that's now my parents house and that's not really like my home yeah. as much anymore um my parents sold our childhood home a few years ago and my mom really she she was super happy about it because the family that moved in is amazing and she was so excited for them but she follows them on social media And my mom will send things to me and my sister being like, oh, look what they did to the living room. And we're like, no, No, shut our eyes. So when you said like that you were offered to kind of go in and look Mm -hmm. around, it was like, no, I want to remember it as it was. And I was like, I felt that so deeply because as my parents were like packing everything up, I made one last trip when the house was still the same. And then I was like, sorry, mom, I'm actually not going to help you (laughs) because I don't want to see the house empty. No, I'm still a sucker for wall to wall carpet, man. Yeah. Like <laughs> yeah. we have to travel all over the country for work and you know, like my husband will go do a movie somewhere and I'll follow him mm-hmm. with the kids. And if I can find an Airbnb, like a VRBO yeah. with wall to wall carpet yeah. in the living room where I could just stretch out. Mm-hmm. Right. I love it. It makes you feel comfortable when you're away from home. You're like, wow, I feel like I'm home again. Yeah, and and the home of my childhood mm-hmm. because those are certain like design elements that no one does anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And I love it. I want to feel like I'm 10 years old with the carpeted stairs mm-hmm. and, you know, like the the ugly appliances. Yeah. I remember the day that we got rid of our carpeted stairs. It was a big day. Oh, well, we were like, oh my God, we're getting wood floors. We're fancy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, oh my guys, God, we made high, a little extra money this month. Huh? Highfalutin, man. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, I loved it. I thought that was that was great. So you transitioned through all these different locations. The North Carolina house. Yeah. Was that scary or (laughs) like I'm reading because I just I don't know. Sometimes I kind of go through like, do I love or hate the idea of ghosts? Yeah. And that felt a little like in a 
in a happy ghost, but maybe there's not some not so happy ghosts. So out there, there were a number of them in that house. Yeah. Um, when I first bought it, I remember I needed the um, I need the inspector to come and look at the house and sign off that it wasn't going to like cave in on me. And so this home inspector came over and I'd already been living in the house as a rental property for like six months. And so I was used to it. Candles had been lit already. We'd already heard voices in the house. Like it was normalized for me. But this big burly dude is walking through the house with me and it's broad daylight. And we're in the kitchen and we both hear this dog growl from the dining room and I ignore it because (laughs) Mm -hmm. I know what it is (laughs) and he is like oh I didn't know that you had a dog do you want me to close the door to the back porch so he doesn't get out and I was like there's definitely (laughs) not a dog in this house and he said oh and he got up and he left and he went and he did all the rest of the paperwork for the next hour in his car. So he's like, <laughs> I don't want to be in this place. And we would hear, like if you sat on the front porch, you could hear the nails of a dog like jumping up onto the windowsill from the inside. Like, you know, when dogs yeah, are like yeah, jumping yeah, out yeah. the window. Lots of people heard this. And the deal is the woman who lived in my house, who didn't die until like the 90s, like just a couple years before I moved in, she would get the same dog over and over again. It was a Boston Terrier. And so in doing research for this book, I was looking up her and all of the artwork that you know she had Mm -hmm. and I found a painting that she'd done of her dog and it was like this is my ghost dog it's so cool to see in real life what was the first experience you had in that house where you're like okay there's there's things happening here and I'm gonna be okay with it it was the very first day Mm -hmm. um the very first day that we moved in it was my dad and my brother and my boyfriend at the time and then one of my co-workers another guy named Bill and so it was all dudes and my neighbor had come over and introduced himself he was this super sweet man Rabbi George he looked like Santa Claus and he came over and offered to let me cut flowers from his garden anytime and he was like I've been feeding the cats on your back porch (laughs) you know like Mm -hmm. if you want to take over that job I've got the food. He was just so lovely. And so we unpack and I take a bathroom break at a certain point and I go into a bathroom that's pretty central in the house downstairs. And all of a sudden I hear like the footsteps of all the dudes racing over to the bathroom door, which is like, I don't want them to hear me pee. Yeah, yeah. I open the door and they're all standing outside and they're like, who are you talking to? Did that George guy come back in through the back door? I'm like, what are you guys talking about? Yeah. And they were convinced that he had come back in or that I was talking to a man in the house because they had all distinctly heard a deep man's voice coming from where I was. And so then later, as I lived in the house longer and started talking to more of the neighbors, it became apparent that the woman, Hester, who haunted my house, was known throughout the community for having this deep booming voice. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And I found her obituary at the public library And in it, she was described as gruff and wonderful because she was just like a grumpy, spicy lady. So yeah, that gruff voice. (laughs) Can you imagine dying in your town, (laughs) memorializing like as gruff Gruff. and wonderful? And wonderful. (laughs) Totally wonderful, but gruff. I'm going to get that tattoo. Gruff and wonderful. So I think that's such an interesting way to look at that experience because normally you would hear about that, right? Somebody moves into a house, they find Mm -hmm. out it's haunted, they're hearing these things, they're like, I need to get out of here. Immediately, like I need to get yeah. the fuck out of here, and you kind of like in, embraced it, and I, <laughs> it I became a project. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that, um, like, like you said about grimoire, it's you know has like a negative connotation mm-hmm. to it, and the same thing I feel like happens with ghosts, right? Yeah. Because yeah. not all ghosts are bad. Like there no. are spirits around us that are just hanging out in my eyes. Yeah, and so it's I feel like there's sometimes nothing to be afraid of, although. Maybe there are times to be afraid. (laughs) Listen, so like Hester wasn't in my bedroom. Her Mm -hmm. mother, I guess, died in my bedroom and was terrorizing my boyfriend at the time. Like apparitions all the time. Like really, really scary. I would wake up every once in a while to my hair being pulled 
which is a weird way to wake mm-hmm. up. Yeah. Uh, and wake and up, Hillary. <laughs> I thought I was losing my mind. And it was so validating that other people would right. come in and have similar mm-hmm. experiences. Thank because, God. That's what you need. Yeah. Yeah. yeah because like, you sound like a crazy. Yeah, I sound yeah. like a crazy person yeah, right, right now. 20 years <laughs> later talking about it. Because they're, they're like, wait, she stayed? <laughs> yeah. For, for like seven years. Yeah. <laughs> And so when you tell people stories, you're really boiling it down because mm-hmm. you're telling a 15 stories, but they happened over the course of seven years. Yeah. So it wasn't a constant barrage mm-hmm. of poltergeist activity. Hey, it builds character. It really does. <laughs> and it was a great barometer for who I actually wanted in my life, right? Because right. she she would kick people out. Yeah. Like my brother brought a chick over to make out one day while I wasn't home and they were kissing in one room and they heard this loud crash in the front parlor and they go in there and I'd had this big framed picture on the wall and the nail's still in the wall and the picture is in the middle of the room, not broken, the string isn't broken. Like. Yeah. She just wanted that girl out of the house. So. That is so funny. I've had chills for like the past 10 minutes of you talking right. about this. Yeah. I, you got to live in a creepy place at least once in your life <laughs> yeah. so that every other place you move into, you're like, it's fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the bar set yeah. so low. The farm yeah. is a dream. Yeah. The farm's so <laughs> <Yeah>. easy. Because, <laughs> um, and like even just still history wise, witchcraft, there's just that term in general has always yeah. has like, you're like, witchcraft like come on you well, know? so what, what was really important to me in this book is that I cite yeah. all the other books that have influenced me right at the beginning because people ask all the time they're like well what should I be reading if right. I'm interested in this and so there's a list in there and one of the books in there is about midwives being described as witches and so there was a movement um, in Europe where all the noble families had run out of property to give to the sons and they're like how are we going to take care of these dudes I don't know we'll create medical schools and we'll make them the town doctors so all these rich boys went to medical schools and learned like riffraff right. mm-hmm. leeches and yeah, shit yeah. <laughs> you know and they would go into these small towns thinking that they were going to be welcomed like kings. And all these villages were like, no, no, we've got this lady over here that's been taking care of us for generations. She's good. And she actually knows what she's talking about. Right. And so the way to remove the trust that the communities had in these women were to vilify them as witches and say, no, they're possessed by the devil. And when you read those historical accounts of how it all played out, it's still happening in our country. You know, yeah. it. when I told people that I was using midwives, they were like, oh, ooh. <laughs> yeah. that sounds scary. That's so interesting. Right? Yeah. It's, you know. What is your favorite form? I guess, you know, you talk about candles yeah. and po- like what's what's your preferred act? Yeah. I mean, I like fire. Yeah. I'm a, I like a tangible transformation. Yeah. Um, and also, I think whether it's placebo effect or it's real, when totally. my husband walks in the house and he sees candles lit, he's like, cool, cool. All right, things yeah. are up. Um, <laughs> my kids all know. They're yeah. like, mom's lighting candles. She's yeah. getting weird. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I like I like a tangible transformation. And I think it's good for your own mind to sit with something in that moment. So if you are going to sit with you know a small candle while it burns down and really just concentrate on what you want, It's mindfulness. Yeah. You know, you can call it witchcraft. You can call it mindfulness. You can call it meditation. You can call it praying. You can call it whatever makes you comfortable. But the practice of sitting in your own space and really going through the steps of saying, this is what I want. This is how I want it to happen. And these are, you know, Mm -hmm. this is the energy I'm going to put out into the world is important. And so I like lighting candles and putting a pin through them. And if the candle burns down so that the pin drops, uh, it's a good indication that it's going to happen. If, for whatever reason, the wax melts in a weird way and that pin just gets stuck, it's time to move on. So sometimes the universe will send you happy little little hints. It's interesting how 
like so many people have different methods, right? So like yeah. you like candles, you know, people love crystals. Yeah, yeah. Like th- anything, mm-hmm. you know, if there's a full moon, right? Like yeah. put your crystals out, charge them. Like there's so many different methods, like you said. And it's interesting how you mentioned that they're each called something else. Like whatever you want it to be called, yeah. but everybody has the same idea of why they're doing it. It's like they want to bring something to their life mm-hmm. p- in a positive way but it could be called so many different things because like I'm a crystal girl like yeah. I have my crystals and like I right said like, what's you, your what's your favorite crystal well I I have a lot of like rose quartz which mm-hmm. is just nice like yeah. love happy girl. yeah um <laughs> I have got, you seen those bathtubs made out of rose quartz? No. Like every once in a while on Instagram, they're oh. like, here's an entire tub made oh. out of crystals. And you're like, God. <laughs> I had one um, for so long that I felt like genuinely had power. Like, you know, yeah. you just like feel it was a clear quartz. Mm-hmm. And I just something about it. I carried it with me. Every, everywhere. It was everywhere. always in the purse. And like, I just think like I just felt like it really just brought me great things and now I don't have it and I just felt like it like did its purpose you know what I mean yep. like well that's it so I've had I wore like a ruby for mm-hmm. a very long time on my pointer finger because I really needed to tap into like my bitchy divine feminine <laughs> yeah. energy mm-hmm. and that is the year that like I made a lot of things happen and then one day I woke up and it had just completely fallen mm-hmm. out of the setting and I looked every there was no place it could be it just turned into mist right and I didn't need it anymore I didn't need to be aggressive anymore it was Mm -hmm. time for a new chapter it's it's so interesting like when those things happen because I had a carnelian bracelet yes yes and I wore it every single day with the rose quartz Mm -hmm. bracelet wore them every single day and then things were going great and then one day I just fell off like I just was like going like this right and it just fell off and I was at first so freaked out because I was like, wait, I've worn this every single day. Mm-hmm. Things are going so great. Now that I'm not wearing it, are bad things gonna happen? Right. And I did all this research and it was like, no, like it's done its purpose. The energy is used up. That's why yeah, you man. don't need it anymore. You're free. Yeah. <laughs> you did it. Congratulations. <laughs> but I think it's it's like goes back to what yep. you're saying. Like there's just, people just have different methods, yeah. but they all kind of go back to the same thing yeah and if you're lighting candles at you know in the church right if you're saying the rosary I grew up in an evangelical church and so I'm no stranger to devout Christianity and was the kid that did like Jeopardy Bible study on Wednesday nights you know (laughs) and what was crazy to me as an adult is the more curious I got about these other areas and the more permission I gave myself to explore them without feeling like Mm -hmm. I was gonna burn in hell the more similarities I found between what I had been taught as a kid and what all these other practices were encouraging. So it is. And I love that sense of just general spirituality, whatever it is. And I like you list a bunch of different gods and yeah. goddesses, but from all different areas, right? From different cultures, different times. A saint, you know, saints yeah. like every the it's saints all, are all you can touch, pagan gods right, you that can they all were touch like different areas. We can't like, get them to stop worshiping these guys. Yeah. We should probably just make them saints. <laughs> yeah. That sounds cool. So it 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 is like it has a great general touch too. So I feel like that's nice because you're not. It's a it's a book like everybody can enjoy. It. It's not like leaving anybody out or thinking, oh, that I, I wouldn't like that because that like yeah. doesn't have what I believe in in there. And it has like a bu- it has mm-hmm. everything. It's a buffet, man. Yeah. Like that's one way I have a friend who's Jewish and he was making so much fun of me because he was like, hell, it seems like you and all the Christian chicks that have like grown up are all like just picking and choosing from a buffet what you want to put like salad bar style yeah, yeah, yeah. what you want in your spirituality and i was like yeah that's what it's supposed to be dan like yep that's it yeah pick and choose what feels good mm-hmm. um because we've been for you know centuries told we're evil incarnate and we're not yeah so yeah you we get to do the picking now yeah exactly <laughs> uh, so obviously this is also nonfiction, but I did mm-hmm. see that maybe there's gonna dabble in fiction yeah I mean so what's interesting about this book is I started writing this in my early 20s um, and it was like f- I had to collect like 40 journals over the course of my life to compile into this and 
in all of that searching, I also found about 40 books worth of short stories yeah. and fiction. And writing fiction was always that kind of daydream that I had as a kid, right? Like I was winning awards for writing fiction in fourth grade and yeah. thought like, yeah. yes, yeah. this is what I'm going to do. Um, and, you know, acting opened a lot of doors for me and I'm really grateful for it. But I'm also at a phase where I'm like, I'm a PTA mom. I really need to be able to work and take my kids to theater after school and do all of that stuff. And so it feels good to put this out into the world and encourage the fiction and nonfiction side of it um, and start to move into that fiction zone so that other people can act out the stories. Mm -hmm. Other people can produce the stories. Yeah. You mentioned being a PTA mom. And when we first started, when you first came mm -hmm. in, you were like, you know, I was here, then I had to Dude. drive back, and then I came back. What's it like being a PTA Seriously, mom? Seriously, I was trying, <laughs> listen, I have my phone with me. I was trying to dry my hair to get over here. And I was trying to answer all these like, P mm -hmm. it's PTSO. PTA is okay. like a like a branded club. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, we are PTSO, Parent Teacher Student Organization. Okay. And uh, it is my entire identity at this yeah. point. <laughs> <laughs> like, I never thought I would be that mom, but my kids in middle school, and I think we can all assume that you like middle school is universally awful yeah mm -hmm. i don't think it's it just, has it's to just, be man it's just gotten worse it re the, i would assume it's gotten way it's worse it's just yes. gotten worse yeah the it's, pandemic these yeah. kids left school in like fourth grade and didn't yeah. go back to school until like in the middle of sixth grade mm -hmm. and it was a brutal yeah. I, it's, and it's, everybody's changing at yeah. that time it's such, everybody's such going through it at different years. periods yeah. And so we have for so long just accepted the fact that it's awful. And I am a button pusher and I'm like, but what What if it doesn't have to be? Like, what mm -hmm. if we make it frivolous and fun and like warm and loving? And so the teachers are doing an excellent job of teaching the subject matter. But there needs to be this like parental movement of just like, hey, baby, you're doing a good job. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we're planning the Halloween festival right now. And Ooh. it's in the midst of this book tour. So I'm just like, book, 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 Halloween haunted house, book, yeah. book, 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 haunted house. Um, and so, yeah, I was in the city on Monday doing live with Kelly and Mark. And it was like, cool, cool. This is so cool. Nice to see you guys. Yeah. I got to get my ass back to the farm because yep. we got a PTSO mm -hmm. meeting tonight. But isn't that also like, I feel like that is so cool. And I mean, there's you can find that balance in a lot of different parts of this country, but like having Manhattan be here <laughs> in the heart of everything. And like, you, this is the, you know, I think the best city in the world. And if yeah. you like, you don't have to go too far for you to find no. your, your sanctuary. It allows you to compartmentalize yeah. in a really healthy yeah. way. Cause I don't want them to know all the stuff I'm involved in yes. down here. <laughs> yes. And I don't need people down here to know all the stuff mm -hmm. I'm involved in up there. Yep. Uh, no, it's a nice way to compartmentalize. Yeah. Do your yeah. kids like you being involved? Um, <laughs> to my face, they're like, yeah, yeah mom, it's fine. <laughs> no, what was, um, what's cool is that with your children, you have to model what you want them to do. And my son was having a rough go with this reentry period in middle school. And I was mm. like, join a club, do the thing, do the thing. And then I realized I wasn't, I wasn't joining in on stuff. And so once I started helping out, he joined newspaper and he's yeah. doing drama club and now mm -hmm he's joining in and that's something that's hard to remember when you're juggling work and kids and home and all the things yeah. you have to do it you have to like show them how you can't just tell them to mm -hmm. especially these kids because you know they lived in a bubble for years they right. don't know yeah definitely it's it's a it's a hard balance do and they, i think coming out of like yeah not having to really socialize that much no. is right. so hard do they use ipads oh hell yeah yeah. Listen, that I don't way. like the rules, man. The parents that are like, we don't eat sugar. We don't yeah, use yeah. iPads. No, I meant like at school. Oh. Like, is there textbooks, iPads? Like, I don't mean your kids using iPads. Oh. Like, that makes sense. Yeah, no, listen. No, I, Girl, mean, I need like, a minute. No, I yeah, mean yeah. like the, the um, like, I yes. remember when we were leaving, when I was graduating high school, like two years after, they got rid of all books and all textbooks no. and it became strictly iPads. And I was like, I think I would hate that because yeah. I like the act of like actually writing things down yeah. to remember things. And when I heard everything switched to iPads, I was like, oh, I don't like that. In the pandemic, everything was yeah. on the laptop. And so when they re-entered school, they tried to maintain everything on the mm. laptop. And I know that my own personal home situation is that I don't have the executive functioning to do things on a screen. I have to write everything out. I wrote every yeah. word of this out by hand before <laughs> I typed it up. 
and my son's the same way. And when I went into the school and spoke to them about executive functioning skills and people having mm-hmm. different strengths, there were these teachers that were like, yeah, we yeah. miss paper. Yeah. <laughs> so this year it was an option okay. to have a paper planner. And yes. there's much more like book work and stuff. And that is why you are in the PTSO. Well, it, was, <laughs> and it wasn't just me. I think there were yeah, a lot of yeah, people being definitely. like, paper, please. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah, people have different skill sets and we like to write things down. It's a different way to manifest. Definitely. Even definitely. if it's your seventh grade math homework. That's yeah. true. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I do I do want to talk to you a little bit about the podcast because yeah. it's one of my favorite things. Uh, we spoke to you, I believe, before the podcast that came yeah. out because mm-hmm. it was 2020. So 2021, you guys do release Drama Queens. You're in season five now. Of you guys re-watching. set the tone. I was like, podcasting seems fun. Oh my, <laughs> and, and honestly, like it was just the best idea ever. Yeah. And w- I think so many people love One Tree Hill and mm-hmm. hearing you guys go through it again is so special because I do feel a real honesty from all of you too talking about (laughs) it, which I love because people kind of, sometimes people tiptoe around their show when they're doing these. Rewatch podcasts are massive now. And they, you know, they don't want to make people upset or do this, but it's like, I want to hear how you really went through all this Mm -hmm. and what you think about it now. So what was the biggest surprise for you going into making this podcast? I mean, people have been upset with me since I left the show, right? right? So it's like, (laughs) Yeah, there was nothing fair. to lose. Yep, like, yep. all right, cool. I already pissed all you guys yeah. off. Um, I, I'm watching someone that I don't know, right? right. Like, that's 21, 22 year old me, and so the distance between who I am now and that person, I feel like I'm watching one of my kids, and so I have found that I've become really protective of that person, but also like a stern parent, yeah. the way mm-hmm. I am with my kids. Like, oh, really? That's your best work? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mommy's proud of you. Um, yeah, there's just a separation that yeah. allows me to, A, enjoy it without feeling like like, like I'm bragging or something. Like I can say like, shit, that was awesome, yeah. without mm-hmm. feeling like I'm even talking about myself. Um, but I also think it's important to talk about the hard stuff because there's lots of young women coming up through the industry and when it's your first job yeah. and something gross is normalized, you have no touchstone for what's real or what it should look like. And so if our show can be the thing that's like, hey, hot tip kids, don't go to dinner with your boss you know, till <laughs> one o'clock in the morning because yeah. nothing good can come of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's important. Right. Yeah. Did you expect to get so honest when you first started or did things start coming out and you were like, all right, this is this is the path I want to go on now? I think the only way to do it yeah. was to be super mm-hmm. honest. And I'd already ripped all the Band-Aids off, like with writing Rural Diaries, yeah. my yeah. first book. And the whole Me Too movement just kind of like put me in a position where I was pregnant with my daughter and I was all of a sudden like thrust into a lot of conversations and... I just felt like I had nothing to lose anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, if I I wasn't going to name names, if I wasn't going to just like tell all the gory details Mm -hmm. so that people actually cared, then nothing was going to change. And I'm really fortunate that my husband was so wonderful about it because I was like, I might not ever work again. (laughs) And he was just like, cool. I got it. (laughs) You're good. Um, you, of course, you you grew up with Sophia and Joy. who has been yeah. on this journey together, but doing a, a show is so different now. Like rewatching yeah. it, what have you? Are there like a couple things that you've learned now about those two while oh, doing for the sure. podcast? I was literally just talking to my publicist out in the hallway about this. Um, when Sophia first moved to North Carolina to start doing the show, you know, I'm riffraff from Virginia. <laughs> you know, I'm the public school kid. I. The, Nothing fancy yeah. about mm-hmm. me. She was from like Pasadena. She was the Rose Bowl queen. Oh my God, she yeah. was like so pretty. And I just assumed that she was like great with boys. And only in our adulthood, she's like, Hillary, I went to an all girls right. school. <laughs> like yeah. One Tree Hill was the first time I was hanging out with like a lot of boys. Yeah. And I was like, that's crazy to me that yeah. One Tree Hill was her first real high school experience. Yeah. You know, like the Americana. Mm co-ed situation and I just never ever realized that and the same thing for Joy yeah Joy's like hell I was working on a soap opera right like you're the only one that high schooled your brains out um yeah and maybe that's why I was so bossy on the show is that I really did have a great 
uh, home experience and was like, this isn't what high school is. Like cheerleaders are supposed to wear their hair in a really tight ponytail so we don't get hurt during stunts. <laughs> I was serious about the accuracy, you guys. Oh my god! Yeah. To a that fault. Is so funny. Yeah. You know, everyone else is like, "Calm down, it's the WB." Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's so funny because we think the same things watching these shows back. We're yeah. like, "Why is their hair down all the time?" Or like, uh, "You can't stunt yeah. with your hair." Yeah, I know. She's the man comes to mind when like Amanda Bynes is running around playing soccer with her hair down. You're mm-hmm. like, "There's just no There's way. Just no way. There's yeah. no way her hair yeah. would be flowing You're in the wind like that." Oh, no. yes. <laughs> No, the accuracy is really important when you're like 22 yeah. and you're like, you guys don't understand. <laughs> yeah. What has been, uh, so you've gone through five seasons. What's been your favorite season to rewatch? I mean, or you're almost, you know, we're five. in five right yeah, now yeah, yeah. and I'm digging five. You're like, um, mm-hmm. we just, we just finished up five and it was, it was awesome because we were finally playing our real age. Yeah. So a lot of the stuff that stressed us out, like the teenage drinking and sexuality and like setting a tone for that new normal that was right. happening in the early 2000s. That wasn't my high school experience. Yeah, yeah. And so when we had to play it, I was like, what? Like you guys want us to be Melrose Place, but we're supposed to be 16. Yeah. Once we got to be our own age and just like go nuts, I was yeah. there for it. I loved it. Isn't it crazy that that has also like not changed too? Like the shows that are on now that are high school are yeah. also just so insane. Like mm-hmm. people watch Euphoria and you're like, no, no. no, no. I don't remember this. No, no. I, this my not son's middle my, school. My, my school. So my son's middle school is attached to the high school. So I'm yeah. literally in the building like twice a week, every single week. And so when Euphoria came out, I was like, what? Oh my, you, will, you see, will you see actual 15 year olds yeah. and you're like, you little Right. You, you see what they look like. Like no high school guy was looking like Jacob Lordy. No, no, None. you guys. No. no, no, like nerd out in high school. Yeah. Go yeah. through that awkward phase and like just lean into mm-hmm. it. Yeah. It's important to have it because yeah. you don't get it later. Right. Oh, sadly, you know, I I'm, I don't want to keep you too long because we've we're already a little bit over. But I loved and I have to mention it. And everybody's been annoyed because we've been talking about it nine million times. But you tweeted about. Uh, t- whatever it's called now, X. When X you tweet, well, yeah, you X. I, I don't know. <laughs> you posted. I still say tweet. Yeah. Um. About Travis Kelsey inviting Taylor <laughs> Swift to the game, and you were like, M- "Guys, this is the way to do it. Bring your lady to your place of work. It. <laughs> it's I sexy. It. It's great. <laughs> I love it. It's how my husband got me. Yeah. I had never dated an actor, and Jeffrey and I met. We were introduced on a blind date from my friend Danielle Ackles, who's doing my book yes. tour tonight. Um. And and he was like, I'm doing this movie in New Mexico. I want you to come and visit me before you go off to Paris. Because I'd rented this apartment in Paris, like right by Notre Dame. Like I was going to write my book. Yeah. Right? And I was so serious about it. And I'm like, I'm not going to visit this man at work. <laughs> I have never been the plus one at work. Yeah. Like that is yeah. not my vibe. And I went. And I would sit in a chair behind the monitor and watch him work. And he was so nice to everybody and really, really good at his job. And I was like, I guess I'm not going to Paris. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to, I blush still thinking about it. I was like, I'll just stay here in New yeah. Mexico. You can see it on your face. I love it. Yeah. I love I it. I still get girly. I, yeah. I think, I mean, you guys are, are adorable. And, you know, it feels like recently there's just been a lot of like, divorce and people yeah. sharing all these things and I, I I hate to ask like the secret because I feel like that, that always has like different I yeah. don't know it's like a weird marriage well it's make weird to put work, anything you know? on a pedestal right and, right exactly so you're just it's waiting like, for it to get knocked yes, off yes exactly but I would love to know like what you guys do to really keep your relationship healthy yeah I mean I think what was really important we were two very very independent people and we're both eldest children yeah and we're both like overachievers <laughs> and just like, no, I'm the best. No, I'm the, you know. Uh, I think we have given each other permission to be a whole person and we overlap where we overlap and where we don't, that's totally cool. Like my husband goes to bed at 5.30 in the morning and sleeps till 10. I go to bed at nine and I sleep until 6 a.m. You know, yeah, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. and there are so many fights that we could have about the TV being on, right. and, you know, like piddly <laughs> yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. I just accept the fact he's a vampire. Yeah. <laughs> right? I don't want to fight with you. Right. Like, yep. that's you, dude. Mm-hmm. I like you. You're handsome. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. It's, it's nice when you really like somebody, and that's yeah. why those little things can, like, not bother you. Because you're like, like you said, you're like, I like you, so. Yeah. Grand scheme Do of you. things. <laughs> Watch your shows. You yeah. Know? Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's important to not be codependent and 
and let the other person be a whole yeah. person mm -hmm. on their own and appreciate what that is, even when it doesn't align with what you want. Yeah. And that's that's great. I mean, girl, guys, he found out I was a witch. Oh, I was gonna, <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget his face. He was just like, oh, oh, all right. And it like I, I feel like, like what, um, what kind of witch, yeah. you know? Like, and I was like the bad. Kind. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Watch the out. Don't fuck it up. Kind. Yeah. No. <laughs> That's yeah. Funny. He but it was something that he accepted about me that was like not my thing, but. Boy, you look cute doing it. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. I love, I love that. that. Oh, great. It's just, yeah, it's <laughs> just so awesome. Cute. Um, we could talk to you for forever. Oh, I, I love, I can listen honestly, to you talk like for hours. No, honestly. you guys I, are so No, I, I do. I, I really I can. Truly, I'm just like, tell me everything. I know. And I'm so glad you got to come in person. Well, if you want to do PTSO, oh, <laughs> yeah. the meetings are a thrill, yeah. guys. <laughs> I would just like to sit there and listen to you like boss people around. I don't know no. what you're doing. Yeah. I don't know. It's just it's it's awesome and I love like catching a, a glimpse of your mm -hmm. of your world in, in the books. Nice. And I love the first book. This is also fantastic. I just like after we spoke on Zoom in I guess that was probably twenty twenty. Mm -hmm. The and, dark years, yeah. And I just like I left the Zoom and our conversation I just thought was so great. And nice. I was like, that was amazing. Right. No, and I just nice. love I love um hearing from you and yep. I and we're just also such big fans thank of everything you. so thank you so much for coming yes, in Grimoire so Girl much. is yeah. available everywhere you can buy it in your local bookstore online yeah, listen man. to it audible yes yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we're everywhere, everywhere. you should exactly. listen to it because you have such an amazing voice and a storytelling yeah. voice like you no you really do no, like I seriously have had chills the no. entire I cried after time our last interview talking to you like I I have had full body chills where I just feel captivated by your presence you guys are yeah. so great well keep doing what you're doing I Thank love you. this office so much I'm gonna come back so please, please do. whether you guys like it or not please, we'll be back. please come back um thank you so much yes, for coming. Thank you. thanks for having me